<laughs> okay. So let's go ahead and get this uh, get this party started. Amen. Amen. So, Father, we just thank you for today, thank God. You. We thank you for your your presence in this place, Lord. I, I thank you for these dear people that you brought over here, God. And and Lord, have your way. Just have your way today, Lord. Whatever you want to do, whether it be just to just to stop and pray for people, whatever it is you want to do, have your way. In Jesus' yes, Lord. name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So anybody do your devotional? Yeah, yes, I did. Yeah. No? No one? Yes. Don't feel bad. I'm stalling. I'm trying to find it. There it is. Okay. It says the life of power to follow. It says Jesus answered, where I'm going, you cannot follow me, but you shall follow me afterward. And when he had spoken this, he, he, said, he said to him, follow me. John 21, 19. Take a look. John 21, 19 says Jesus said to his two indicate the kind of death in which Peter would glorify him, he said, follow me. Okay. That was okay. That didn't work well. <laughs> Whoops. Okay. He said, and when he had spoken this, he said to him, follow me. Three years earlier, Jesus said, follow me in Matthew 4, 419. We're not going to go there because it messed us up last time. Um, he said, follow me, to, and Peter followed him with no hesitation. The irresistible attraction of Jesus was upon him, and he did not need the Holy Spirit to help him do it. <laughs> Later, he came to the place where he denied Jesus, and his heart broke. Peter's heart broke. Jesus yeah. knew it was coming. It was Peter's heart that broke. You, you ever do something uh, you know, that, that you know hurt the Lord? Um, you know, was against the call that he has on you, and it kind of breaks your heart. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Well, that's where Peter was. Peter, Peter loved the Lord, and he said, "He said, I will never, I will never deny you." And Jesus said, "You will deny me before the sun comes up." And uh, he says, "You'll do it three times." And uh, and it broke Peter's heart when he found out that that was true. And he said, then he received the Holy Spirit, and, and Jesus said again, follow me, in John 21, 19. It says, now no one is in front of Peter except the Lord Jesus Christ. The first follow me had, was, was nothing mysterious. It was an external following. Uh, amen. Come on. How many people do we know that have that external following going on? Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you heard the Lord, and so now you're coming in. You're kind of coming in to look, see what's going on. Amen. Jesus went to Peter and, and, and he said, come follow me and I'll make you a fisher of men. And, and so he did. And he did because, hey, amen, we'll get to that another time. But amen. So between these two times, Peter denied Jesus with oaths and curses. But then he, became, then, then he came completely to the end of himself and all, the, all of his self-sufficiency. See, when we first start following God, a lot of times we're, we're in a place of self-sufficiency. We're in a place where I can do it myself. And, and, we, and we do our best to, to, to follow God. We do our best to be obedient. And, and, and then we come to a place where we learn that, um, well, it's not as easy as I thought it was going to be. It means sacrifice. It means, it means change. It means, it means stuff going to have to happen. Amen. And and then we it breaks our heart because we thought it was gonna we were gonna be able to do just fine. Mm -hmm. Amen. So between Amen. these two times, Peter denied Jesus with oaths and curses, just like we've all denied him at times. Maybe not with an oath, maybe not with a curse, but but we've denied him at times by by not not doing what he says to do. Jesus said, "If you love me, obey me." Uh -huh. It's simple. If you love me, obey me. Keep my commandments. 
Amen. 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 But then he came complete, completely to the end of himself. This is a place where we all need to come. He came to completely to the end of himself and all of his self-sufficiency. There was no part of himself that he would ever rely on again. In this state of destitution, he finally, he finally ready, he was fine, I'll learn to read someday. He was finally ready to receive all that the risen Lord had for him. He breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. No matter what changes God has performed in you, never rely on them. I'm going to read that again because I don't think we all got it. No matter what changes God has performed in you, never rely on them. Never rely on the changes that God has performed in you. Sometimes we see the difference between how we are today and how we were a year or two years or five years ago um, or however long ago. We, we see that difference there um, and, and, and it's, we, we start thinking of something. Uh, we start putting a little cloud in it. Amen? Um, I, I don't think I'm the only one, uh, but sometimes we, we do, and we're not to rely on that, but we build only on a person, the Lord Jesus Christ, and on the spirit he gives. We have to keep our reliance on him. All our promises and resolutions end in denial because we have no power to accomplish them. When we come to the end of ourself, not just mentally, but completely, where we are able to receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit, the idea is that of an invasion. There is now only one who directs the course of your life, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. I like where it, where it says that it's an invasion. Amen? Mm -hmm. yeah. it's, it's, it's an invasion. Let me get that back up over here. Has the Holy Spirit invaded your life? Have you allowed him to invade? Are you seeking for him to invade your life? A lot of us aren't seeking for him to invade. I'm not saying us here. I mean, I would never say that. But a, a lot of people aren't seeking for the Holy Spirit to invade their life. They're seeking to invade the Holy Spirit. They're seeking to, to, run, to run in charge uh, of their own life and just use Holy Spirit as a, as a helper when they need it. Yeah. Um, or when they want it. Not yeah. even when they need him, but when they mm -hmm. want it. Uh, amen. Um, and that's not what he's looking for. He's looking for an invasion, you know, kind of like, uh, kind of like, uh, you know, um, uh, what comes to mind is Normandy. Remember World War II and Normandy, um, the, the army and all the affiliates, they invaded Normandy. Um, mm -hmm. And, and they, they took Norman, they just they just took that beach, um, and it cost them dearly. Um, many of them had to die to do it, and that's what it takes for us to 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 invade to be invaded by Holy Spirit. We have to die. Yes. I don't mean a physical death. Yes. Uh, I don't mean because you can't serve the Lord if you're dead physically. A amen. I, I mean I mean that 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 part of you. It wants to be in control. That part of you that wants to be in charge. You're, you're still going to be in charge, but you're not going to be the number one guy. You're going to be the number two guy. Yeah. Um, a amen. Because we're taking our direction now from Holy Spirit, we're, who who gets it from the Father Himself. The Bible says, "Who has known the heart of God or the mind of God except the Spirit of God, which is in Him?" Yes, yes, yes. Amen. So Amen. when we when we when we rely on Holy Spirit to give us direction and guidance, when we, when we rely completely on Him because we've allowed Him to invade us. Now, different than Normandy, when when Holy Spirit comes to invade us, um, He's not doing it um, forcefully. He, excuse me, He needs us to do it forcefully. Watch this, because he's given us free will, and he will not violate your free will. It, 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 you want to know one thing God won't do, um, not that he can't do it. He can if he wanted to, but he won't. Um, so I guess that means he can't if he won't, and he's declared that he won't, so he can't because he can't go against his own word. Um, he won't violate your will. Nah. He won't violate your will. 
If you don't want him, if you don't want him invading in your life, if you don't want him coming in, he won't come in. He will only come in and invade as you allow him to. As you, as you, and and you're going to have to, you're going to have to allow not only allow it, but you're going to have to to kill off some enemies. We talked about yeah. it once before the invasion of the land. I, I, I don't remember the name of the lesson, but we talked about when when the Israelite went in to take the land. Um, I think it was I think we talked about it here uh, when Israel went in to take the land. Um, God said, "Look, I, I've got these other people in the land taking care of it, um, and I'm gonna, I'm going to drive them out, but I'm not going to do it all at once. You need to go in and take the land. In other words, you have to go in by force and allow Holy Spirit to come in. There's going to be some things in you, some some Uzziahs in you that 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 say, no, 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 no. Um, I've got this. I'm good. Okay." Um, but you've got to take that out. You've got to say, no, you don't got this. You got to go and invite Holy Spirit to come to come invade you in that area. Uh, amen. And you may have to do it every day for the same thing. You may have to do it multiple times a day. Anybody talking? To, a, a, amen. Yeah. You, you may have to do it a lot. Um, I've got areas it's... in my life that I have to I have to invade multiple times a day. Um, mm-hmm. Amen. And I don't think I'm. I don't think I'm so different. I really don't think I'm so different. I think I'm just a normal everyday person. And, uh, and sometimes it's a fight. Yeah, yeah. Come yeah. on, talk to us. Talk to us, Pastor Janet. Amen. Pastor Janet, let her talk. You know, I'm reading um, what Apostle Paul said. Uh, mm-hmm. he, he says there, there's a war among my members. What? When I would to do good, evil is always present. Ooh. And so sometimes it's it's a war because this this flesh of ours wants to hold on. And right. many times we think that, well, yeah, we say we love God, but do we really know what that means? Do we really surrender all to him because denying yourself? That's major. Major. Oh, preach it. Preach it. it. Go, go, go. It, go. It, when I finally got that, it, I mean, I've been going to church for many years, and yeah, I rejoice. And, and, and I thought I was there, but um, it wasn't until probably 10 years ago when I had gone to a conference at Fred Price's in uh, LA and the preacher started preaching about denying yourself. And that's when I got it. I had heard that for so many years, but I didn't get it until it's been maybe eight to 10, not quite 10 years. And it changed my my whole life. Everything changed, denying me. Because I realized at that time, I don't belong to me. What? I don't belong to me. Jesus purchased my rights. Oh, man. And and so I started, I mean, I could hear Holy Spirit even more clearer. And when that war came, when the the Janets tried to resurrect and I would do something, I mean, Holy Spirit was right there tweaking me. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. sometimes he still has to keep me on the right, the straight and narrow. Right, right. Because, yeah. because the old man always wants to creep back in. Uh-huh. Yeah. And so, but denying myself, I have when I even when I hear messages and I hear people, preachers and, and God's servants talking, that word, the denying them, it, it just you can hear it. You can hear if if the person is not there yet. Or it, it's something, and not to be judgmental, I'm just saying that the sensitivity 
of how he changed me. It, it just denying yourself that that is major. Major deal. Major yeah. deal. But Jesus said, unless you deny yourself, you can't be my disciple. Yeah. Oh, well, that's rough words there. Yeah. But wait, I thought I was just, you may be a believer, but you're not a disciple until you deny yourself. Oh, uh, now see, I hadn't connected the two. Yeah. 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 You, you might be a believer. Um, and a lot of us, we, we all start out believers. You know, I know when I started out, I was, I was, I was a believer and, and uh, amen, but I was yet to deny myself. Mm -hmm. um, I was still like, okay, well, I'll be believing while well, I'm getting loaded. <laughs> <laughs> I believe I'll get loaded now, you know, a amen. Um, so it, it, it is all about, all about denying ourselves, And it doesn't mean that we're putting ourselves down. It, it means that, watch this, before, before the fall, Adam was ruled by the spirit of God that was that was that was I don't want to say in him because he didn't come in us until after Jesus, but but the spirit of God that that he had connection with. Amen. Uh, so he was ruled by the mind of God, if you will. Uh, and then when he fell, he he was no longer ruled by the mind of God. Now he was ruled by his flesh and his soul. Remember, the Bible says, unless two be agreed, they can't walk together. So the, the soul and the flesh had to come into agreement with one another so that they could walk together. So when Adam fell, he still had some memories of how things were supposed to be. But then he was put out of the garden and, and was still trying to make things as they were supposed to be. And at the same time, had to learn a whole new way of doing stuff. Because God said, by the, by the sweat of your brow, you're going to make the earth give you her bounty. Uh, amen. So that tells me that before the fall, he didn't have to sweat to do that. Oh, come on, somebody. Amen. We, we have to see what the word says. You know, and, and it, God said, by the sweat of your brow. So this is a new thing to Adam, having to sweat, having to work, having to labor. This is a new thing to Adam. Uh, because God says, by the sweat of your brow, you're going to make the earth give, give you her bounty. Uh, and so, so he had to figure that out. So through the years, the flesh man, which is, you know, this flesh, and the soul of man, which is our mind, will, and emotions, ruled everything. Right up until the day we got born again. Mm -hmm. Amen. And some of us, it continues to rule us. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, some of us, it continues to rule us, even though we're born again. When we get born again, we, we know something's different. We may not be able to put our finger on what it is. I know when I got, when I got born again, I, I, something was different. I didn't know what it was, but something yeah. was different. I didn't have the benefit of a discipleship class. I, I wasn't, uh, you know, I didn't have that. Uh, amen. Um, mm -hmm. Me. It just wasn't available. Okay. Yeah. But, but had... Had I had that, I, maybe I wouldn't have backslid. I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but then maybe I would have. Who knows? Um, my crystal ball got broken when we moved over here. So, um, amen. But it's, it's the Spirit of God that comes to live in us whenever we get saved. Now, that Spirit of God is contrary to the soul of man. The soul of man has been in charge in our life. Between the soul and the flesh, they've been running stuff, and they like running stuff. Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Your flesh likes to get its way. Yep. Um, your soul likes to get its way, um, and that's just the way it is. That, so what it, what it means when, when Pastor Janice was saying, die to yourself, it means you take that soul, you take that flesh, and you say, no, you've got to obey the Spirit of God, which is in me now, which the Spirit of God has now giving me direction on what to do, on how to act, what to say, you know, how to dress. I mean, the whole, the whole nine yards. And, and you've got to take direction from the Spirit of God and not from yourself. That mean, that's, that's what it means to die to yourself. Yeah. Your, your control over your life is now given to God. Yes. Now he controls your life. Now, he's the one that's, that's giving you directions. 
Uh, amen. Because if it's left up to the spirit, excuse me, if it's left up to the soul, the Bible says that the, that the flesh cannot please God. The mm -hmm. flesh, if you remember back in Genesis, let's go all the way back again. If you remember back in Genesis 3, um, when, when Adam fell and God was pronouncing, uh, pronouncing sentence, if you will, um, he, he, uh, he, he said, from dust you came and dust you will return. Your flesh has already been sentenced to decay in the dust. Mm -hmm. So every okay. one of us will die and will decay in the dust. We'll decay in the dust unless we're, you know, die at sea and eaten by fish. And then we're fish doo-doo. Um, that sounded bad. Um, yeah. But whatever, okay. But no, yeah. no, nonetheless, we all have been, our, the flesh of us has already been sentenced. So the Spirit of God will not, uh, will not fail. The only thing that's in question is our soul. The idea is that our soul man would marry the spirit. Yeah. When God brings the spirit into on the day you're born again, the day something's different, something in there is telling you that things are different. On that day, you begin to you begin to to grow in the things of God. You begin to read the word. You begin to uh, begin to obey the word a little bit here and a little bit there. As you as you as you gain understanding, you begin to apply this stuff to your life. Yes. You begin to listen. You begin to move forward in the things of God, even though it's crazy. Sounds crazy. We talked about it a couple of weeks ago. You know, sometimes this stuff sounds crazy. Just do it. Um, if you just do it, you'll see that God's for real. God's for real. I just gave someone some instruction today. I told him, I said, it's going to sound crazy, but if you do it, you'll see results tomorrow. Um, and, 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 and it's crazy. It sounds crazy to our flesh. It sounds crazy to our soul man. Remember, if we listen to our flesh, the Bible says that the flesh is enmity with God. In other words, the flesh cannot please God. It right. never will please God. So if we listen to our flesh, we know that we're not pleasing God. It's really Amen. simple. A Amen. Amen. The Amen. only thing that can please God is the spirit. The idea is that our soul, that's our mind, will, and emotion, marry the spirit and, and become subservient to the spirit of God and, and listen to and follow after the spirit of God to where the, to where the, the, uh, the soul and the spirit become one. I was just going to say that. You were. Well, that's I where I got it, it from. I, I heard it from you <laughs> telepathically. <laughs> Those exact <laughs> words. Yeah. 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 Amen. It's just going off in my head. It's like you were reading my mind. I was. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. But it was so good. I had to. I had to. I had to steal it. <laughs> yeah. The two become one. Yeah. The Amen. two have to become one. It, because when 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 Except we die, the mind of Christ. Ex exactly. It's uh -huh. the mind of Christ. It, when when we die, our flesh goes in the dirt. Yep, dust it, to dust. It just goes in the dirt. That's even if you're cremated, it's still back to dust. Whatever it it goes in the dirt. Um, so the only thing in question is our soul and the spirit. The spirit goes back to God because the Bible says the spirit came from God and will return yes. to God. Yes, the spirit is God. So yes. the spirit that God put in us, it, it, it says it's the spirit of man. The Bible talks about it being the spirit of man because it's the spirit that's put in man to 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 guide man. Uh -huh. Amen. So it's the spirit of God in man, which is the spirit of man. Watch, watch this, watch this. So that spirit goes back to God. The only thing in question is the soul, our mind, will, and emotion. That's why it's so important that we train our soul man to do right. He don't want to do right. The soul man's used to getting his own way. He's used to partying until dawn. He's used to, he's used to, you know, chasing after skirts or jeans, whatever. Um, he, he's used to, he's used to doing what he wants to do. Uh, are you following me? Amen. So the idea is to teach the soul to follow the spirit, mm -hmm. where they they both become they both become one, where they both. Mm -hmm. Amen. And your flesh man will will he won't try to drag you off. Once your soul and your spirit man become one, uh, the Bible says that when the two agree, they can walk together. Can walk when together, the soul and the flesh together, agree. Together. Your soul and the spirit agree. When the oh, okay. soul and the spirit come into agreement, mm -hmm. then the flesh man will follow right along. Okay. Amen. The flesh man will do exactly what you tell him to do. 
No more arguing. No more, you know. You know what your you know what your flesh tries to get you to do. Mm-hmm. None of that, because now the soul and the spirit are in agreement. Amen. But if the soul and the spirit aren't in agreement, then guess what? The soul and the flesh are. They've been in agreement for since you were born. Mm-hmm. Since you were born. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Amen. So they've got a long they've got a they've got a long time of being in agreement. The Bible says unless two be agreed, they can't walk together. So we can't walk with the Spirit of God until we come into agreement with the Spirit of God. Oh, that's tough. Amen. Amen. I don't know how we got on here. How do we get over here? It's good though. Was it part of them? Oh, denying the flesh. Yeah. Denying the flesh. Amen. Okay. Any questions on that so far? Yeah. That was really good, Pastor Janice. Thank you for your input. I appreciate that. Amen. All right. Hopefully, we can come to the end of this lesson. Okay, back in Isaiah, it says, just kind of a brief recap, it says, And the posts of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. And we learned last week that the door represents entrance into our life and into our heart. Amen. And the post, which is also called the door frame, um, it's, it's the placing of the post is determined by the direction in which you receive instruction. Uh, okay, so if you're if you're uh, if you're receiving instruction from the wrong place, if you're receiving instruction from the from the things of this world, um, I was talking to a guy earlier today, and, and we and and one of the things that uh, that we talked about was the news, um, and and we came to the understanding that uh, if 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 we're getting our, our news from the evening news and from YouTube and from Facebook and all that, then, then your pain is self-inflicted um, because they don't even know what they're doing. The Bible says the truth is not in them. So why will we look to them? Why will we look to the world for the truth? Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. What? Does the, so so when, we, when our attention comes from the flesh, when our attention comes from the soulish realm, amen, which is our realm, this is what I can do, the soulish realm, when this, when my attention is focused in that direction, then that's where my antenna is going, and that's what's going to be coming in. Now, the more that I allow the world to feed me, the more that I allow the system of this world to feed me, the more that I allow fake news to feed me, the more that I allow this, then the, then the goofier I'm going to be in the head. Because this is what I've allowed to come in. The Bible says to guard your heart with all diligence. Guard, mm-hmm. your, guard what goes into you. Guard your eye gates, your ear gates. Yeah. These, these places that these places that they come into you. Amen. It says he says guard your heart with all diligence because out of it nope. come the issues of life. And the word issues is the word for boundaries. So everything that we allowed to come in our eye gates, our ear gates, everything that we allowed to come in to feed us, wherever we're pointed toward for for our for our um, information, uh, for the lack of a better word. Um, that comes in and it begins to fill us. It begins to it, it begins to cause us to act in a certain way, whether it's good or bad. Amen. If we if we put our focus on the Word of God, if we put our focus on on the things of God, then we know that that yeah, okay, there's a there's a there's a Corona thing going on. Ooh, okay, there's a Corona thing going on, but it's it's not for our destruction. It's for a birthing. He said a birthing. It's for a birthing. There's some things that are going to be birthed out of it. Uh, amen. Any any ladies here ever have a baby? I can't raise my hand to that one. Um, I know <laughs> some, but um, 
<laughs> Amen. So you know that in the, in the, in the birthing process, it, it goes through an unpleasant time. Let's just, let's just go with unpleasant. Amen. It goes with the time where it's, where it's not fun in the birthing process. But at the end of the matter, there's a birth. At the end of the matter, um, it no, the, that, that unpleasantness, it may be remembered, but it's no longer of importance because now there's a, a new life, a birth. Yes. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Amen. Mm -hmm. There's a birthing get, getting ready to take place. It does. It makes sense. Amen. Yeah. There's a birthing getting ready to, to take place. And it's coming with a shaking. You know, when when uh, the Bible talks about the olive oil and the olive, um, the, the olive tree, the olive branch uh, being a branch of peace, the oil being being representative of the Holy Spirit, you know, the, it speaks a lot of the olive. You know how they you know how they harvest olives? They put tarps on the on the ground around the olive tree. Nets. And they hook this machine up to the tree, to the trunk of the tree, and they shit the living daylights out of that tree. And all the olives fall to the tarps, and then they just pick them up. Mm -hmm. So there's a shaking going on. Stop it. There's a shaking going on that's <laughs> bringing a harvest into the church. People are calling it a revival. It's not a revival. It's a harvest. A revival is when the people in the church get their hearts caught back on fire again. That's your responsibility. That's not God's responsibility. It's yours. It's mine. The the well, oh. in Exodus chapter thirty something. Exodus, read the thing. It's good. Um, but in Exodus, it speaks of when when God started the fire for the altar. That a fire from heaven, God sent lightning or a fire from heaven down and lit the altar on fire. And he said, it's up to the priest now, that's you and me, we're kings and priests. It's up to the priest now to maintain the fire, to keep the fire from going out. So if our fire gets a little bit too, too lax, if our fire gets, you know, because we're feeding ourselves from the things of the world, we're watching, you know, the evening news and, and, and you know, and whatever we're, we're, we're not really feeding on the things of God, but we're feeding on the things of the world. Our mm -hmm. doorpost have been, has, has moved to allow entrance of the things of this world. Mm. Our fire begins to, begins to dim out. Mm. It begins to go down. And then we look for a revival. I got news for you. It's not God's responsibility to revive you. It's our responsibility to keep the fire going. Amen. Oh, people don't want to hear that one, but that's that's just that's just a matter of fact. Um, it's our responsibility to keep that fire going. How do you keep the fire going? We have to we have to reposition that doorpost to where it now picks up. We have to reposition the antenna, okay, to where now it picks up the frequency of heaven. Instead of positioning ourselves to pick up the frequency of this world, which we know that the enemy is is the the prince of the power of the air. The Bible calls him the, the, the ruler, the God of this world, okay? The God of this world system, amen? Instead of picking up from his frequency, we have, to, we have to change the positioning of our door. We have to change the positioning of the entrance into our heart to be that from God. To where we're, we're picking up God's frequency, amen? Mm -hmm. oh, I don't know how well they're it makes sense to me, but then a lot of things that probably shouldn't do. Um, amen. So we have to reposition our door to pick up the frequency of God, and that will reignite the fire. That will, that will, you are in control of your own revival, y'all. The, the church is goofy. I mean, the church wants, wants revival. All you have to do is reposition, and you're revived. Yeah. Reposition. That's it. Begin to seek after the things of God. I want revival because I just don't feel it anymore. And, 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 and I want, you know, I need God to help me to where I can feel it again so I can follow after him. He said, no, you draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. Yeah. Amen. Okay. Amen. Yes. It's, it's, it's yeah. not a matter. He, he already lit the fire. Mm -hmm. He already lit the fire. It's up to you to keep it going. Amen. So revival is crazy. I, I don't, I don't, it, it's, it's crazy. What we're looking for is a harvest. 
Jesus said that the field is ripe with harvest. Yeah. Even when he was here 2,000 years ago, he said the field is ripe then. How ripe is it now? Oh, yeah. Lord, have mercy. People are looking for something now. Your kids are looking for something. Your kids are looking for supernatural. Your kids are looking for something. You, If they don't find it in Jesus, they're going to find it somewhere else. If, if, we don't, if we're not able to, to, to reveal Christ to them, they're going to have something revealed to them from the world. Yeah. Oh, this is real stuff right now. I'm just talking. Yeah. Uh, this is just real stuff. Um, amen. Amen. It, and if it's not real to you, it won't be real to them. That's right. That's right. It can be real to me all day long, but unless it's real to you, it won't be real to them. Right. When it's real to me, my kids pick up that it's real to me, and it sparks their interest. Amen. When it's real to you, your kids will pick that up, and it'll spark their interest. Are, are, you, are you following this thing? Because that's the, that's the job of the father. That's the job of the, of the parent, is to, is to demonstrate Christ before their family, to be the priest of the home. That's Amen. right. Amen. Are, are you following Amen. this thing? Yeah. We can't be the priest of the home. We can't demonstrate Christ to the family when our antenna is pointed in the wrong direction. When we're when and we're expecting someone else to be that priest in the home. Someone else isn't the priest of the home. Yes. yes. You are. Yes. Yes. Man. Oh, what? Yeah, man. This was not planned, yo. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Confirmation there. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. 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 So that's, I mean, that's what it's it's all about is repositioning. And how do we reposition? We learned this last week. Let me get back over there. We learned this last week. And, and it is all about uh, the posts were repositioned at the voice of him who cried. In other words, your verbal worship positions your heart to receive the essence of the one you are worshiping, whether good or bad. Oh, your verbal worship, your, your physical worship uh, your physical, whether it's sports, it could be it could be football, it could be TV shows, it could be work, it could be family, it could be all kind of things. But but those that are around you, those that are around you, can see what's important to you. Worship. We talked about this, I think, last week. We, we the worship yeah. isn't singing songs. That's the climax of worship, okay? But true worship is in the way you present your life. Yes. It's in the way you live. That's yeah. true worship. And people see how you worship. They don't necessarily call it worship, but, but they see how you worship. How you live your life, that's going to determine which direction your antenna is pointing. If you're in... Oh. If all you want is a little Sunday morning Jesus and the rest of the week we're just going to live like the devil, well, your antenna is pointed in the wrong direction, y'all. Um, and you, you have to reposition it by changing your worship, changing that which you're seeking after to be that from God. Mm -hmm. are, are, are you following? Yeah, and, man, and yeah. when, when we do that, then we're going to receive a different signal. I've got an antenna up on the wall over here. And, and if I change the direction of it, um, it works even worse than it does before I change the direction. The thing works horrible. Um, uh, are, are, are you following me? So, so it, it's a matter of the direction that we have that antenna pointed. We'll, you know, we'll pick up a channel or we won't. Um, amen. Anybody remember the old rabbit ears on top of the TV with the Ooh, aluminum yeah. oil? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And if you didn't have them things positioned just right, you weren't getting uh, one of the three channels that we had back then. There were three, that's right. There were three, you know, ABC, NBC, and CBS. Yep. Then they came out with Fox, I think, in the 80s or the late 70s. They came out with Fox. So then we had four. A amen. Um, but you weren't getting any of those if, you're, if your antenna was pointed in the wrong direction. It's the same thing with the things of God. If our antenna is pointed in the wrong direction all week long, then we're going to be so full of, of, of the the understanding of this world system 
that when it comes time to, to go to church or to a Bible study or wherever else we're going, uh, it, when, it, when it comes time to do that, first off, there's not going to be a lot of room left in us to receive from the Lord because it's going to be all filled up with this gunk that we've got all week that convinced us that it was right. It convinced us that, that it's the truth. So whenever the truth actually begins to come in, because now we're at church and we're, you know, we're, we're listening to the pastor teach and, 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 and now it, it begins to come in, the things that are already there says, oh, that's garbage. Get, you, know, you don't need it. But in reality, it's the other way around. Uh, are, are, does this make any sense? Uh, yes. For, for, for years, I would hear what the pastor says about, about walking in the Spirit. I'm like, what, what's he talking about? Um, I, how, how do you walk in the Spirit? Didn't make any sense to me. Amen? We have to reposition what we do all week long. to where, And that's... That's going to spark the revival in your life. It's going to spark the revival in your home. It's going to spark the revival, and you won't be asking for revival anymore because mm -hmm. you are the master of your own revival. The church doesn't get that. The no, church keeps no. looking. They keep chasing after this preacher or that preacher. Or Benny Hinn comes to town. We've got to go see him, or, or that preacher comes to town. We've got to go see him because we need revival, revival. Revi There's even preachers going around going like, revival, this is a revival. I, I know people that are going around. I personally know people that, that are going around preaching revival. And I'm like, y'all are crazy. Um, because revival is sparked by you. You spark your own revival. It's, you know, what we're trying, what we're doing is, is a harvest. Yes. It's a harvest. It's not a revival. Amen. Amen. Hopefully something, hopefully something I say will, will, will convince someone to reposition their antenna and cause a revival. That would be cool, but it's still not revival. It's your, you're responsible for your own revival. When I stand okay. before God on Judgment Day, it's going to be like I told them, Lord, um, they didn't listen. Be like Jeremiah, you know, because Jeremiah, he, he preached his whole life, and not one person came to the Lord. Not one, not one soul repented. Uh, at, at, and he even quit. He, one time he quit, and they were beating him up for, uh, and put him in prison uh, for preaching the word, and they uh, and, and he quit. He said, I'm not going to talk for you anymore, God. Um, but then he, he, he repented, and he went back doing it. Uh, but he was called the weeping prophet because it was it was all bad. Um, even in Jeremiah 29.11, uh, this is mm -hmm. way off base, but I'm going to go here anyway. In Jeremiah 29, 11, where it says, I know, the, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and, and good and not evil. And Amen. We, we have all heard this verse, um, and we've all heard this verse taught in a positive way. But this, this verse was actually spoken to the children of Israel while they're marching into captivity from Babylon that God sent to them because they were going to butt spank it. <clears throat> oh, we don't want to hear that part. God was just saying, look, y'all getting, getting your booty spanked right now, um, but this is not what I wanted. This is not what I wanted. And on the other side of this, there's going to be some good stuff. Amen. Okay. Okay, which one are we? We're here. Okay. So. And... Uh, It says that the house was filled with smoke, and we learned that the smoke is a symbol for, for blinding power, whether good or evil. So the smoke power you're filled with is determined by the direction of your doorpost. The direction of your doorpost is determined by your heartfelt verbal worship. Your heart, I, Maybe that verbal probably shouldn't be the right word. What should be a better word there than verbal, y'all? Um, physical worship. I think verbal is good. Direction of your because we do express verbally as we worship physically. So I okay, I think it's good. In my opinion, I concur. Your opinion matters. I. 
Your life matters, Janice. <laughs> and Ms. Jones. <laughs> okay, so we've learned about, about the positioning of the doorpost. When, when Isaiah, who was a prophet of God for five chapters, I don't know how many years that was. Um, I've never studied that out. I have no desire to study that out. Um, but he was a prophet of God before this happened. Then Uzziah died. When Uzziah died, he was able to see the Lord. And as he saw the Lord, he began to see some things. And this is his reaction. I then said, I woe is me, for I am undone, because I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King and the, the Lord of hosts. The moment that he saw the glory of the true God, he realized his own need. The minute you see yourself in comparison to the true God, the holiness and the righteousness of the true God, you'll realize your own deficiency. But as long as our God is the God of this world, as long as, as, long as we serve a God that we created in our image, um, then we won't. We'll, we'll see ourselves as sufficient. I, I you know, I, I'm, I'm a good person. How many ever said that? I'm a good person. I've never killed anyone. I, you know, I try not to hurt anyone. Um, you know, I try to do right. Um, I, I don't tell real big lies, maybe a white lie here and there. Um, you know, um, <coughs> amen. Most of us think that we're pretty good compared to the God that we created. We are. When, we measure, when we're measured, when measured to the glory of the true God who created us, we lack, and our only response is for mercy. That's the only thing we can say is have mercy. Yeah. yeah. That's the only man. thing that we can say, woe is me, I am undone. I am not the man that I thought I was. I thought I was okay. I thought everything was great um, because I'm comparing myself to another man, and to another man I measure up. But when I can, when I when I see that that the that the the model of righteousness, the model of holiness, is not based on a human being, but it's based on on the spirit of God. It's based on God Himself, and God gave me His Spirit so that I could measure up to that model through the leading of His Spirit, not the leading of man or my own soul, my own flesh. Oh, what? then all we can do is say, woe is me. Woe is me, I'm undone. Me. Because I'm a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. And the reason is because I have seen the king. If you're not in this place, if you've never been in this place, then you've never seen the king. That's the only mm -hmm. reaction you can have. Every single one of us has been in this place. Um, every single one of us, that's where we are. We've been there. We may not be here, but that's we've been there. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So, then flew one of the seraphim unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken from the tongs off the altar. Note that Isaiah did not ask for cleansing. You got to get this part. You got to get this part. He came into agreement with God. What do you mean he came into agreement with God? Let's go back over here. Um, he saw himself as okay. Then he saw the true God, and he said, woe is me. I'm not okay. I'm lacking. Now he's coming into agreement with God. Amen? And when he comes into agreement with God to the point that change was desired, that is true repentance. That is true repentance. We should highlight that. That is true repentance. Where can I highlight that? I'll learn how to highlight that. Um, anything short of this is false religion. There's a lot of religion out there. There's yeah. a lot of religious folk out there that say, you know, you don't, you don't have to come here. I got news for you. This is the entrance into the kingdom of God. Repentance, coming into agreement with God, is the entrance yeah. into the kingdom of God in this in this earth realm. Man, compare this to the rebirth in Christ. Um, I, I like to look at the, the nanosecond that we agree with God. This thing says I misspelled nano. So if I did, any of you brainiacs out there, 
Um, the nanosecond that we came into agreement with God, our spirit comes alive and we see the lack that the flesh and the soul tried to cover up and justify. Mm -hmm. Yes. Amen. Yes. The Amen. nanosecond that we uh -huh. agree, the, the, the moment that we say, God, you're God. The moment. Then we see ourselves for who we really are. And we see ourselves lacking. But God is, we're not lacking just so that we can be lacking. We're lacking so that we can come into agreement with God. And once we come into that agreement with God, he sends his spirit to bring us to where he is. Oh, you got to see this thing. He's a good God. Amen. The mm -hmm. seraph purged. Mm -hmm. What happened? Okay. So the seraph purged what Isaiah saw was lacking, but only what Isaiah confessed was, was lacking. I think we talked about this a little bit last week, um, that he only purged what Isaiah confessed. He confessed his lips. He confessed his, his speech. Amen. Um, he saw that that was, a, a, he confessed that, and that's what was purged. God will never, he will never force you. He will never force you into a place, into a place that, uh, he will never force you into a place that, that he wants you at. He'll show you, and then if you agree with him, now you confess it, and now he'll bring you in. That makes sense. He's not a, he's not a rapist. He's not going to force himself on you. Mm -hmm. He's a good God. Mm -hmm. a amen. But amen. He, gave you, he gave you a free will, and there's going to come a time that you're going you're gonna to stand before him in account of that free will. And so if he was to interrupt that free will in any way, um, then you would legally not be liable for your free will. Does that make sense? Yeah. Amen. Amen. So, so he cannot get involved in your free will. Once you make a choice, once you make a choice to serve him come hell or high water, you are his child now, and, and he will protect you in every single way. Once you make a choice to, to curse him, he will allow that, and he will, all of heaven will come to the aid of allowing you to have that free will and that choice. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, that will he also reap. So everything that we, amen, everything that we choose, um, we're also going to reap. Amen. Amen. Oh, amen. You don't like that part. It says, I also, also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Let me, I, I, I haven't beat this up enough yet. Let me go back over here. Um let me go back over here. Once we see God for who he is, once we see him, the true God, we have one response. One response. If you haven't had that one response, you haven't seen the true God. He doesn't show himself to everyone. He makes himself available to be seen by everyone, but he doesn't show himself to everyone. You have to, like I, like Isaiah did, you you have to seek him. Yes. You have to seek him. Okay, God, who are you? Where are you at? If you're real. Anybody ever pray that prayer? I did. If you're real. Yes. Everybody says you're real. If you're real, show me something. Amen. Um, I've heard people say that that's a horrible prayer. I disagree. I, I totally disagree. If that's where your faith is, that's where your faith is. If, if you're real, God, I, I need to see you. So-and-so tells me about you, and I hear all this stuff about you, but 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 I, I, I need to hear from you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, and the moment mm -hmm. he shows himself to you, the moment he reveals himself to you, you will never be the same again. You will be yeah. completely changed forever. Um, you will be justified. You will be forgiven of all your past sin. You you'll be completely justified. You'll be a changed person. You'll be empowered to come up and and live uh, uh, live the, the the holy life that He's called you to live. Um, people outside the church, people that are even inside the church but are outside of the kingdom, um, 
They, they say, well, God is, is mean to want you to, to live in a way that there's no way you could live there. No, he's not mean because he's given you the spirit of God. He's given you his own spirit so that you can live the way he's calling you to live. It's up to you and I to, 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 to die to ourselves. It's up to you and I to come to the end of our own effort and allow his spirit to lead us. Uh, and instead of being the number one man, be the number two and follow him. Amen. Oh. Okay. It says, also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? That word go is a primary root. Okay. And, and you can go through, you can go through all this stuff here. It says, uh, it is causative to carry. What are you carrying? You're carrying the presence of God. Who will go for us? I like this one down here. You see that highlight there? To be weak. Who will be weak for us? Well, what does that mean, to be weak? In Isaiah chapter 40, it says, He gives power to the faint, and to them that have no might, He increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. It Amen. Comes when, when we come to the place of our weakness, when we come to the place where I, I can't do it anymore. Uh, some say that surrender is, is hard. No, surrender it is hard. But, but surrender is a place that we have to go. It's a place where we acknowledge that, that I can't do this thing. I need your help. I can't do this. I rely completely on you. It's in my weakness that he's made strong. Uh, yeah. In Corinthians, if you want a New Testament, uh, it, says, it says, Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, which is weakness. Uh, this is Paul talking. He says, I take pleasure in my weakness and in the insults and in the, the constraints in the persecutions and in the distress for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. It's those things that I'm weak at, those things that I that I can't do myself. Um, a amen. The, the Bible says to do all that you do, do all that you can do, and then stand. Don't back up. Don't turn around. Do all that you can do, and then stand and watch the things of God. Watch God do what he's going to do. Amen. Amen. Oh. Amen. So there, there's a the voice that, that we hear calling that says to do, to go, to be weak, to 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 go and, and and do to if if we're content sitting on our hands, if we're content doing nothing, I question if we've actually been born again. I question if we've actually uh, come to the place where we're where where we're we've actually seen God. Because when God shows up and he brings that coal from the altar to change us from being who we were to who he's called us to be, there's a requirement on that. It says, and who will go for us? Also heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send? This is the moment that Isaiah's lips were cleansed. Hear this thing, hear this. From the, day, from the day I got saved, I was looking to do something. And I know most of you were too. Are we looking to, are we looking to achieve for the Lord? Are we looking to do? Are we, it, could be, it could be anything. I, I'm not saying that everybody is a teacher or everybody's a preacher. I, I'm not saying that. What, what I'm saying is every one of us have, have that that God is calling us to do. May, it may be just, uh, it may be working in the children's ministry. It may be um, cleaning the toilet. I mean, you know, I was, I, I'll happily do that. Um, okay, maybe not happily, but I'll do that, right? Um, uh, it, we, we need to be about something. Jesus, when he was 12 years old, uh, his parents kind of forgot about him, um, which I think is crazy. He'd been turned into CPS today. Uh, he would have been in foster care. <laughs> that would have today. Um, but um, but um, and when they when they found him, they were all surprised. And he said, "Well, what are you tripping about? Um, didn't you know I'd be about my father's business? Didn't you know I was going to be 
you know, because this is this is the heart of the one that is saved. This is this is the heart of the one that is born again. Amen. This isn't the heart of the one that's born of this world. This isn't the heart of the of the, of the normal one that's born of this world. But the one that's born of this world is born into a a, a, a contemptuous relationship between the soul and the flesh. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. We can't live the life of God in that. We have to be born again, born into the spirit to live this life. And he said, when you're born into that spirit, there's, there's something in you that drives you forward, that causes you to do, that causes you to want to do those things. Uh, amen. Uh, yes, Carmen. You have a question? Did you raise your hand? Or are you just like, hallelujah? Okay, well, when you figure it out, let me know. Sorry, Jerry. Okay. No, sorry. No worries. Don't be sorry. I don't need to get off. Don't be sorry. Amen. So, what was Isaiah's response? He said, Here am I. Send me. He just got saved. And he said, look, I'll go. His response was to go. So the father said, you got a task to do. The response of the human, I'll go. Send me. Send me. How many of us have been, have been making excuses? I've made some. Yeah. I've made excuses. A amen. Um, but this only proves that we've not seen the Lord. And we may not be born again. Remember, every seed has an evidence that can be seen of all men. Every, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to say that again. I'm going to highlight it there so you all can read it. Um, every seed every seed has an evidence. So you, put a, you put an apple seed in the ground, and it will grow an apple tree. You may not see the apple seed that's in the ground, but once that tree grows, you'll see the tree. Everyone will see the tree. Every seed has an evidence that can be seen of men. Amen? Um, immediately, there was a call and a willingness to act on the Lord's behalf. See, God is not looking for perfection, but he does expect willingness. Mm -hmm. Just because we have not perfected a task does not give us the right to abstain from it. Just because we may not be good at, at, uh, at certain things doesn't give us the right to not do it just because we 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 don't feel comfortable um, going out and and feeding the hungry doesn't give us a right not to do it just because we don't feel comfortable going and, and doing a certain thing that God has called us to do that God has instructed and and you know God has God has touched your heart on some things every single one of us He's touched your heart on some things uh, and just because you don't feel like you're the right person for the job doesn't mean that you get to not do it. I've worked in several jobs. We'll just leave several. We'll just call it several. I've worked in several jobs over, over my life. Um, and, and none of those jobs did I get to do whatever I wanted to do. Um, but I had to do what I was instructed to do. Mm -hmm. uh, amen. Yes. Um, if I did whatever I wanted to do, then um, I didn't work there very long. <laughs> <laughs> uh, amen. Um, yeah. there, there's, an, there's an instruction to do. And with the things in the kingdom, there's an instruction to do. Uh, God is in you. The minute you said yes to Jesus, the minute you, you, that you said yes to Jesus and his spirit came in you, now his spirit is in you and wants to come out of you. He wants to come out and touch someone around you. He, he put himself in you. I'm trying to find the camera. He put himself in you. 3D. He put himself in you for a purpose, and that purpose was not for you. What He put himself in you so that he could, he could demonstrate himself to others that are around you. Amen. So he could bring you to the place of your own, uh, not your own, but to, he could bring you to the place of his holiness that you can't achieve on your own. I can't achieve on my own. Right. But God requires it, so if he requires it, he must give us the tools to do it. 
Um, and he does. And, and the tools is called Holy Spirit. Um, amen. Uh, yeah. Please don't call him the Holy Spirit. He's not a thing. He's a person. Um, and, you know, I wouldn't call you the Janice or the Tanny. Maybe the Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> Um, amen. But uh, you, you understand what I'm saying? Uh, uh -huh. And he's and he's put in us to help us to walk this walk to uh, so that we can allow him to be seen. Jesus Jesus put it this way. He said he said, "Let your light so shine before men, yes, that they see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven." Amen. I'm not sure where that's at. It's in one of the four Gospels. Um, you can read them all or Google it. Um, that's a direct quote. Okay. He said, let your light so shine before men. What does he mean by that? The spirit of God that came in you on the day you were born again is directing you in certain areas. Maybe he's directing you to give up cigarettes. Maybe he's directing you to, 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 to stop doing meth. Maybe he's directing you to, to, to get off the street. Whatever he's directing you, he's directing you. Begin to follow that direction. That is the assignment for today. That's the assignment that you've been given today. Now, he may, he may lead you into a ministry later on, but right now he's leading you out of the mire. He's leading you out of the muck. He loves you too much to leave you where you are. He's leading you out of that place. If you will follow him, he's leading you out of that place. And as you follow him, people see. People see, oh, you were that guy. I remember you. You were that. You were, I, 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 I know you. You were that guy. No, I was that guy. But I'm not that guy anymore. Uh, mm -hmm. Amen. Oh, no, amen. Yeah, I know you. Uh, leopard doesn't change his spots. No, a leopard doesn't, but God can. He can amen. change a leopard to a lion anytime he wants to. Amen. Uh, yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. um, are, are you following me? Yeah. But as we begin to as we begin to allow him to lead us in this direction that, that he's, he's, he's calling. Some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know exactly the area of your life that he's calling you to walk from. The area that he's like that he's calling you to, 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 to clean up. The area... We all got something. Uh, yeah. Most of us got more than one something. <laughs> yeah. okay? um, uh -huh. and, and, and we all know exactly what he's talking to us about. Um, amen. And as we do, then people will see that. Remember, everything has, every seed has a, has a, has a, a manifestation that the world can see. Jesus said, let your light. It's not even your light. It's just, it's his light coming from you. Amen. But if you Amen. hide it, if you if you never obey, you just you just you know I go to church on Sunday and that's all I do, and then back on Monday I'm back doing what I've been doing for all my life. Um, I is your is your thing real? Is it real? Are you hearing from God? Have you seen God? Yes. Are, are, you understand what I'm saying? I mean, this is hard. Amen. It's hard to say that, but the fact of the matter is, I'd rather I'd rather say something that's hard and you know maybe make you mad at me or or, or something uh, uh, rather than on that day when you go up to Jesus and He says, "Depart from me, I never knew you." Um, that scares the life out of me. It scares the daylight Amen. out. Amen. Amen. I do not want to walk up to Jesus on that day and he says, who are you? Yes. Yeah. I don't want that. Yes. That scares me. It's as broad as the way that leads into destruction, but narrow is the way that leads yeah. into life. And few yeah. find it. He said, few. You, you, uh, you, you find it. Yes. Uh, Y'all are one of the right few. where it's at. Pointing you to right where it's at. This is where it's at. The place. Don't don't get ahead of yourself. Don't try to you know. Don't you know enroll in seminary and all that fun stuff. Uh, don't get ahead of yourself with the thing that Holy Spirit is dealing with you right now. Where it may be your anger. It may be uh, it may be cussing. It may be you know it, whatever it is. It may be you know smoking a little you know something. Um, you know whatever it is. Procrastination. The thing that God is dealing with you now, fear <laughs> him, listen to him, 
turn toward him, allow him to come in and feed your heart, allow him to strengthen you in that area because where I'm weak, he is strong. Man. I remember my, when I first got saved, I was, I was smoking dope like a madman in the parking lot of the church. Uh, if you don't believe me, just ask me. Uh, amen. Um, and it wasn't until I had, came to the end of myself, a lot of other things too, but, but it, it wasn't until I came to the end of myself that, uh, that overcame that. Amen. Are, are you following me? Where I'm weak. Yeah. Where I'm weak, where I've given up control of myself, where I'm weak, where yeah. I've said, God, I need you here, where I'm weak, he's made strong. Yeah. yeah. If I maintain strength in this area of my life, then I'm going to do it myself. I can do it myself. A amen. Um, mm -hmm. Anybody ever have that attitude? Yeah. Yes. Um, yes. I can yes. do it myself. I don't yes. need your help. I can do it all by myself. Like Medea, I can do bad all by myself. <laughs> A amen. Um, but when we come to the place where, where we recognize our weakness and we, we, and we reposition ourselves to hear from God in this thing, whatever it is, and we reposition ourselves by worshiping the God of heaven instead of the God of whatever it is, then... I'm becoming strong in my weakness. Man. He is showing forth strength. Mm -hmm. He is strong in my weakness. Where I'm weak, he's made strong. And when he's made strong, then the light that he's put in me gets brighter where people can see it and it glorifies God and it makes them want to know what's up with you. Amen. Man. If people don't want to know what's up with you, then you're no different than them. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm just going to leave that one alone. Um, that was good. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Well, that's that's where we're going in Isaiah. I think our our next one's going to be something else. We finally finished Isaiah six. Praise God. At least the first couple verses of it, anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. Very good. It took us long enough. Amen. Any yeah. questions? Comments, bones, bottles? Okay. So, Father, I just want to lift up this, this group to you tonight, Lord. And all others that might hear this on YouTube or wherever, wherever. Mm -hmm. Help us to bring us to that place, God. Help us to realize where we are. We need to seek you. We need to find you so that we can see you. Because once we see you, you'll change our life. Once we see who you really are, we will never be the same again. So, Lord, we want, to, we want to see you. We want to see you, God. Yes, Lord. Help us, Lord, to change the direction from where we're getting our information, to change the direction from where we're getting our instruction, to, 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 to guard our heart, to guard our eye gates and our ear gates, and, and, and to guard ourselves to where we're not, we're, we're not hearing from the world system, but we're hearing from you, God. Yes, yes, yes. yes. That you can be made strong even where we're weak. Because we think we're all that in a bag of chips and a cream soda, Lord. But, but in reality, when we're measured up against uh, uh, when we're measured up against one another, we may be doing pretty good. But when when we actually see ourselves compared to the holiness of a righteous God, we find ourselves lacking. We find ourselves in need of help. And Lord, help us to humble ourselves, Lord, that we can that we can ask for that help. Yes, sir. that we can yes. receive your help. 
Yep. Because you said that you will not leave us, you will not forsake us, but you will be made strong in our weakness. That you, you are, you are awesome and wonderful. Yes, you are, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. So, Lord, help us. We can't do it without you, Lord. But we can. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. We'll give you all the glory and all the honor. All the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God.